Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hypop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're unboxing and reviewing as well as comparing the brand new Aperture Amaran T4C light stick. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts or if you have any questions about the Aperture Amaran T4C. Follow us on social media, the links are down below, and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. So I've got with me the brand new range of Aperture Amaran light sticks. Now this is a highly anticipated range by Aperture. So here I've got the T4C, which is approximately 120 centimeters. And you've also got the T2C, which is about 60 centimeters or so. So two different sizes are available. So why are these highly anticipated lights from Aperture? Basically, uh, Aperture have been, you know, out there making really high quality studio lights, you know, for content creators, filmmakers, and people have been asking them time and time again to create some light sticks and ones that are compatible with their current range of Aperture lights. So that's why uh, these here are really highly anticipated. Now, I'll only really jump into the T4C here, which is the larger one, so we can take a closer look at that one, uh, rather than having a look at both of them because the smaller light is basically the same thing, just in a smaller form factor. So let's jump in and take a closer look at this one. So here we have the T4C, and you can see this is the box that it comes in. A little bit uninspired by Aperture, just a brown, simple box with the Amaran branding here by Aperture. So the Amaran branding is their more affordable range of lights. So it sits in that Amaran range. They do have the Light Storm and other ranges there, such as the Nova, you know, the really high production uh, quality lights. Now, just jumping into this light here. So here we have the light itself in the carry bag. So most of these light tubes come with carry bags, so it's good to see Aperture haven't skimped out on that one. Uh, it's a nice carry bag. It's just, you know, your standard carry pouch, a little bit of padding. It's got a single zipper here. And it sort of folds out like so. And on the inside here, we have a few things. Firstly, they've got a little card that has a few QR codes that tell you to go download the Citus Link app, as well as the product info. Uh, you've also got a guarantee card. Uh, this is all about the warranty. You've got the Citus Link app um, instruction guide. It looks like it's multilingual. You've got English on one side and Chinese on the other. And you have three pouches here. So on this pouch here, you've got a just a standard kettle cord. And here you have an AC adapter, which is good to see, and we'll get into that in a minute. Also got a sort of, it looks like a metal ring here. Uh, it's a mounting ring, I'm assuming, perhaps to mount the light and to hang it onto different locations. And you've also got the battery pack. And this battery pack here, here you can see it has a, uh, a DC out cord, so it's a standard cord here. It's quite interesting. Um, to me, that means that the battery is obviously not uh, built in to the unit itself, um, but it still has a cord, uh, which is also interesting too. So we'll have a closer look at that. And lastly is the T4C itself. And that's the light tube. That looks like a fairly uh, nice design. It's really, um, you know, a streamlined, simple design. You can see there it's got maybe about half of the light tube itself is the white diffuser material where the light will emit from. And then on the back side here, you've got a uh, sort of metal design, which would presumably would act as a heat sink. And you've got a few mounting points here too. So you've got, um, you know, like a quarter inch thread, three eight inch threads on the, uh, on the ends here, uh, on either end. And you've also got some down the center. And then lastly, you've got uh, the control panel here. So let's take a closer look at some of the features. So I've plugged this into the AC adapter that's provided with the light here, and we can jump in to see some of the quick features here of the light. So firstly, um, once you've plugged it in here, you have the option to use the AC adapter, which is included, and then also the battery pack, uh, which is also included. So that's really handy. Um, there aren't many 
other tube lights, I guess, that have you know these two components separate. A lot of them have the inbuilt battery, uh, and that means that you know you have to always make sure that you've got uh, you know charge on the on the light to to operate. So here we um, have it plugged in, and we turn it on straight away. It's on. Um, it looks like HSI mode, and it's gone straight into red. But on the side here, you can see there are a few buttons. Firstly, we've got a USB Type C for DMX. Now that there is um, for DMX only, so it's not for firmware updates or anything. If you wanted to do any firmware updates, you need to connect to Aperture's Citus Link app and do that uh, over the air or you know wirelessly through the app, uh, which is also a really convenient feature because a lot of the times when you firmware update other devices, you have to use a USB stick and then there's compatibility issues. So it's good that you can do that through the app itself. You also have on the side here, once you turn that on, you've got a scroll wheel, which basically controls you're scrolling across all the different settings here. You have a back button that goes back into the different modes um, and you can press down on that scroll wheel to jump into all those different modes as well. Now let's just pull down the intensity. Okay, and you've also got uh, a menu button and the menu button jumps into uh, the different modes that you have. So as with most standard uh, light sticks, you've got CCT mode, uh, which is your color temp mode. Now your color temp mode, when you jump into the color temp, you can go from a 2500 Kelvin all the way up to a 7500 Kelvin. You can see there white sort of blue tint to it as well. And you can also do, uh, you also have your green magenta shift also. So you can match that up with other lights. Um, also, if they're aperture lights or other branded lights, which is also a convenient feature. It's really becoming a necessary feature nowadays with LED lights too. Now, jumping back uh, from the menu, you can jump into the HSI mode. And then from here, you could change the, um, the hue, obviously, um, going between um, all the different hue ratings from zero to 360. Um, so you can see they're just cycling through and you can go into the intensity, reduce the intensity, as well as the saturation. So how saturated you want that particular color to be. So in this case, it's green and you can see it's reducing in saturation there and increasing in saturation as I'm changing that around. Now the next option here is uh, gels. So gels here um, are the Lee Roscoe gels that are pre-built into the light itself, uh, which is a useful feature to have if you're um, you know, matching up and pairing with other filtered lights too. So you also have gel modes here, uh, color filters. Instead of your standard Lee Roscoe filters, you have CTB, CTO filters in full, half, thirds, quarters, uh, et cetera. And you're able to um, jump through all the different Lee and Roscoe ones to match. And you also have effects, so special lighting effects, which I feel are more useful in an RGB WW uh, lighting device. Um, so if you are um, using, you know, particular colored type of special effects, they're a little bit more practical to use um, and a little bit more useful. Um, so it's good to have that added as well. And you also have custom effects. So that means you can set up some of your custom effects, uh, which will all be done through the um, through the Citus Link app, uh, mainly the uh, picker effects. Um, so a lot of color matching that you can do. Um, you've got music effects, um, really cool features here in a tube light that hasn't really been seen in other tube lights also. And you also have the DMX control as well as your frequency set, your battery settings, um, screen off time and Bluetooth reset for your connectivity and changing the language and factory reset. So quite a few settings to go through there, but your main uh, light setting there will definitely be your color temperature mode, your, R, your HSI mode, the gelling mode, as well as the special effects also. Now, when we turn this off, we can connect the battery device to the end here. So this battery um, is something that you can connect to the end. Um, you'll know it's the end because it's a side of the control panel here. And what you'll notice is that there is a little locking uh, you know, mechanism here, you've got um, a lock icon that you can line up to the battery and then you just twist and then it will make a little clicking sound and that locks the, the battery into the light itself. Now this battery is quite hefty, it's quite heavy as well. So um, it does increase the weight of this light substantially. So the light itself is really lightweight and when you're plugging it into the AC adapter, there's not too much weight to it. But once you plug this in, um, it does really feel quite uh, 
bottom heavy in this case. So this cable here plugs directly into the DC port there. That was the same port that we plugged the AC into. Um, it's fixed on the other side, which is good, so you don't have too many issues about, you know, disconnections and things like that. Um, but, you know, obviously the advantage of the battery is that now this is completely portable. So you have a battery indicator here on the side um, that you can press and that usually would show up how much battery capacity you have. So the battery indicator there shows the charge, but currently this battery, we haven't charged it uh, prior to this video here, but we you can actually plug it directly into the charging port here for the battery. So, um, you know, when this battery is off the light itself, that's how you would go ahead and charge it. You use the AC plug, you charge the battery like so. Um, you let that charge up, um, have its capacity, then um, you'd be able to use the light uh, as normal, but in a more portable fashion. So that's really good there. And over here at the bottom, you'll also see a uh, mounting point too. Uh, it's a 3 8 inch uh, mounting point and you've also got a side mounting point uh, where the Amaran logo is here a quarter inch mounting point too so uh, I think overall in terms of the build quality and design as well as some of the uh, menu features here Aperture have really covered a lot of bases here you've got all the different mounting points you've got all the light modes you've got that detachable battery with the AC adapter also so now let's take a closer look at some of the specs of the light so just going through some quick specifications for the T4C firstly it is about 120 centimeters in dimension and length and you've also got the weight of about 0.95 kilos. With the uh, battery pack here, it's about 0.3 kilos. So all up, the entire configuration will be about 1.3 kilos approximately. Uh, its rating also is CRI rating of 95 and a TLCI rating of 98. You have a color temperature range on your CCT mode from that 2500 Kelvin up to the 7500 Kelvin. So quite a wide range there too. Uh, its color accuracy is obviously quite good and, and industry standard. Uh, you have over the air uh, firmware updates via the Citus Link app. You have different ways to control the light, including onboard here via the, uh, the buttons as well as through the app. Um, and overall, uh, it's light metrics in terms of its output. You're reading at about 700 lux or so at one meter for this light in particular. So these lights aren't really used for, you know, so much uh, their power rather than their versatility. So you have all those different modes with this light uh, to be able to use uh, more different, you know, creative lighting effects uh, for, for your scenes. You can use this in photography with light painting. Uh, you can use this uh, as a color gel essentially for photography, but obviously you could use this uh, as a continuous light source, which would be its predominant use uh, in film sets and, and for, uh, you know, video and, and things like that too. So that's uh, definitely an advantage here of the T4C. Now what we'll do now is actually compare a similar light. So a similar light on the market would be the Godox TL120, which is also a 120 centimeter light tube, um, but it's from Godox. So let's take a closer look at that one. So here is the Godox TL120. We've actually unboxed and reviewed the shorter version of this, which is the TL60. So if you wanna take a closer look at that one, click the link up above. But just as a quick comparison here, you can see obviously it is the same size, uh, the 120 centimeters as compared to the T4C. Um, but that also includes the sort of the ends here. So you'll notice that the tube and the ends will equate to about that 120 centimeter for the light source. So in actual fact, you can see it actually is a little bit shorter uh, overall in terms of the light. Now, both of these lights do produce a 180 degree beam angle light. So it's coming from that one side of the light tube there. Um, it does have, for the Godox, it does have the inbuilt battery. So it doesn't have the external battery pack here. Now that is a pro and a con, I suppose. So um, the pro is obviously it's all in one streamlined unit. You don't have to worry about that. You can technically use this while plugged in. Um, so if it does, end up you know uh, losing power in the battery you can plug it in and still operate the light however we don't know what that does uh, in the long term to the battery life so um, in in many cases plugging it in directly to the power pack as you can uh, with this one here with the t4c is a lot more convenient also having the separate battery um, holder here and also the um, the mounting point for the stand is quite good because that means you could have separate uh, battery packs ready to go charged up especially if you're on set and you have a long shoot um, it's good to have a few of those spare too I'm sure Aperture will uh, you know sell those separately in the future 
Now, in terms of all the other features, you have the CCT, HSI, you've got the FX, you've got the filters as well, um, all the same features as the T4C. Now, the other main factor obviously will be the price. So here in Australia, um, the T4C retails at about 520 Australian dollars as compared to the Godox TL120, which uh, retails at $475, so slightly cheaper there. Um, and the build quality, I feel like the um, metal design here of the aperture is quite nice. Uh, with the Godox, you have the casing here um, covers the entire light. So you actually, even if there are heat sinks or you know a heat distribution system in the inside here, you can't see it. Uh, no doubt there is because it's a light and produces heat. Um, so they have to manage that somehow, but you don't see it or you can't feel it uh, in any way here because the case is um, all the way around on this light too. Um, jumping into the menu really quickly. Okay, so as mentioned, you've got the CCT mode, HSI mode, effects. You also have uh, a fairly responsive and easy to use menu system here on board. Now with Godox, you do have the Godox light app that this light does connect to. So it's actually um, the same thing as the Citus Link app with the T4C. And you also have the gel buttons here too. So you have your Lee and Roscoe gels as well if you're pairing this up to other lights. So essentially, if, you select, if you're selecting the same gels, you can match up even you know, off-brand lights, so the Aperture and the Godox, they can all be matched. Um, so that's also a useful feature to have. The good thing about the onboard controls with the Godox uh, light here, the TL120, are uh, that you have separate buttons for your separate mode. So you've got the mode here that switches between CCT effects and uh, the HSI, but you also have the gel button here too, as well as the wireless mode where you can toggle between Bluetooth for the app, 2.4 gigahertz if you're wanting to use a physical remote control, and then also DMX control too, uh, which you can see the connection point is there, uh, which is your standard cat cable there for the DMX. However, the Amaran here has the uh, USB Type-C DMX cable too. So all in all, really similar lights really uh, good to use for all content creators, filmmakers, quite similar in terms of their design, uh, but you can see they're sort of lacking in terms of size for the Godox and a few additional, uh, I guess, usability features for the T4C where you're able to separate the battery pack and the AC adapter. Uh, but the price, obviously Godox wins in that department where it is slightly more cost effective, which does add up, especially if you're looking at multiple lights of these. A few more things about the Godox. Firstly, Godox do support uh, multiple ki light kits with this. So you do have this available as a four light kit. You also have brackets that support two light and four light configurations. So you can have them mounted on this bracket to create one large light source. Uh, whereas the Aperture Amaran T4C, here you can actually connect two larger four foot tubes together to connect up an eight foot light source, which is really impressive too. Now you can do this obviously with the uh, T2C, the shorter 60 centimeter T2C. So that means you'd create essentially a 180 centimeter or just shy of two meters light source also. And overall the Godox light is uh, comparable to the Amaran. So it just comes down to the system that you're currently using. So being able to use those app systems, the Citus link for Aperture, and the Godox Light app for Godox lights. It depends on which one you've invested to already because obviously you want all of them to work together with your lighting setup. So that was just a quick unboxing and review of the Aperture T4C. For more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts about the Aperture T4C, as well as its comparison to the Godox TL120. Follow us on social media, the links are down below, and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.